Hi, my name is Evan. I go to the University of Minnesota Duluth. Today I am at DigiKey HQ's Makerspace, and this is Summer Break Edition. For this last video in the series, I'm going to build upon my project in the previous video and use a Raspberry Pi to create a portable MIDI synthesizer. Let's go over the bill of materials. You'll need 12 mechanical keyboard switches, keycaps for the switches, 12 surface mount diodes, two 10K potentiometers, two caps for the potentiometers, sheet metal screws, two washers, flex cables, vertical headers, right angle headers, a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, a micro SD card, a USB-C power supply, a micro HDMI cable, a short USB cable, four standoffs, and eight standoff screws. I also created an enclosure I 3D printed, a lid for the enclosure that will also allow me to mount my Raspberry Pi to it. The STL files will be available in the Maker.io blog or on DigiKey's Thingiverse account. And I also used a Bantam mill to design a board for the button matrix and a shield to make it easier to connect to the Arduino Leonardo. You'll need a screwdriver. Optionally, I added three NeoPixels for lighting effects. Now I'm going to take my bent and milled board and I'm going to solder the switches, the diodes, the potentiometers, and the headers onto it. Now that I am finished with my board, I will assemble my enclosure. The only tool you'll need is a screwdriver. Let's get started. Once the screws are in place, I'm going to screw it down. Now that my board is secured into the enclosure, I'm going to add the shield to my Leonardo. This shield makes it much easier to connect the board to the Leonardo. To connect the board to my shield, I'm going to use flexible cables. Now that the flex cables are attached, I'm ready to begin adding keycaps to the switches. I 3D printed these keycaps in black and white so that they could more closely resemble a piano. Now that the keycaps are in place, I'm going to add the knobs for the potentiometers. I'm also using a lid for my enclosure that will also allow me to mount my Raspberry Pi to it. First, I'm going to insert the standoff screws into the mounting holes on my lid. Now that I have the screws in place, I'm going to twist the standoffs onto the screws. Now that the standoffs are in place, we are ready to mount the Pi. You'll use your remaining four screws to mount the Raspberry Pi to the standoffs. Now let's take this into the lab for programming. For the micro SD card, you'll want the latest version of Noobs loaded onto the card. With the card ready, you'll insert it into the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. Now I'm going to secure the lid to my enclosure using extra screws. Use a micro USB cable to connect the Raspberry Pi to the Arduino Leonardo. Now we're ready to connect the power supply to our Raspberry Pi and connect a mouse, keyboard, and monitor. Once you have the operating system loaded, we are ready to install software. So now we're going to begin programming our Raspberry Pi synthesizer. We are going to need Raspbian, which I have already installed. I'm going to open terminal, and I'm going to type sudo apt get update. This is good practice to make sure that you are always running the latest version of Raspbian, whether you've freshly installed it or if you have an older Raspberry Pi. Now that we've checked for the update, we're going to install pure data by typing sudo apt get install pure data. Next, we are going to install another program that will allow us to connect our MIDI controller to pure data. Then we're going to type in sudo apt-get install alsa-base alsa-utils. Lastly, we are going to install a program that will allow us to graphically connect the MIDI controller. We are going to type sudo apt-get install aconnect GUI. To open pure data, navigate to the menu, go down to sound and video, and then select pure data. 
What you see now is the main Pure Data window. To set up Pure Data for a MIDI controller, go to Media, select ALSA MIDI, type 1 for the Imports box, save all settings, apply, and then OK. Plug in the MIDI controller to the Pi. To connect the MIDI controller to Pure Data, you'll have to open another program. Navigate to the Start menu, Sound and Video, and then A Connect GUI. In the window, you should see two options under Arduino Leonardo, and then one option under Pure Data. The arrows next to them show whether it is a MIDI import or a MIDI outport. You'll want to connect the MIDI outport of the Leonardo to the MIDI import of Pure Data. To do this, click on the wires, then click on the outport of the Leonardo, and then drag over to the import for Pure Data, and release once the wire forms. If at any point you disconnect the MIDI controller from the Pi, or if it stops working, you'll have to repeat this process to set it up again. Now, we are ready to test the MIDI connection. Back in Pure Data, go to Media, Test Audio and MIDI. What you see here is a patch. In Pure Data, the programs that run are called patches. This is a patch to test the MIDI connection. You can also test the audio. To test the MIDI connection, push a button on your MIDI controller. You should see the same MIDI note number associated with that button pop up down here. You can also push any button to test to make sure that all of the buttons are working. You can also test your volume potentiometer. By turning it, you should see the numbers over here change. Now that we know that our buttons are working, let's check the audio. First, make sure that the volume on the Pi is all the way down. Then, connect either speakers or headphones to the 3.5mm jack on the Pi. Click on the box next to the 60. Then, slowly turn up the audio until you can hear a sine wave. One thing to notice about Pure Data is that when you have the audio on, the box next to DSP will be checked. If at any time you'd like to silence Pure Data, uncheck this box and it will turn off the audio. Now we can close the test audio and MIDI patch. We are going to start by downloading an example synthesizer for Pure Data from GitHub. Go down to Clone or Download, Download Zip. When it finishes downloading, double click on the zip file. Open your Documents folder. You will see a folder called PD. This is where Pure Data places files by default. Drag each of the files into the PD folder, except for the one called README. Within the PD folder, the files will be placed in a folder called MIDI Synthesizer Master. It is important to drag each of the files individually, otherwise you may have multiple MIDI synthesizer folders. Open the folder, and then open the file called MIDI Synth Main. Once it opens, I'm going to zoom in to make it easier to see. Go to Edit, Zoom In. Now that it's open, you can set up the MIDI connection. This is the interface to change the controls of the synthesizer. To adjust these controls, make sure Edit Mode is unchecked. Go to Edit, Edit Mode. First off, the master volume. To try it out, make sure that the DSP box is selected and that your volume is low. These are the volume envelope controls. These allow you to adjust the fade for before and after a button press. Down here are the harmonic sliders. These change the tone of the sound by adding frequencies known as harmonics. Each one controls the volume of each harmonic, and they are labeled accordingly. To begin editing the main patch, you will first have to go into edit mode. Go up to edit, then edit mode. For each harmonic that you would like to add, place a vertical slider, then scale it accordingly as shown. Then below, connect it to a send object. I recommend following the same scheme used before. For each harmonic, name it H and then the harmonic number, such as H2, H3, and H4. You will have to keep track of these for when you change the tone patch. After adding the harmonic sliders, make sure edit mode is unselected and open the tone patch by clicking on it. Here you can see I have 11 oscillators for my 11 harmonics. Simply add more to the right. Each harmonic will have a multiplier associated with the number of the harmonic. Then it will be connected to an oscillator, and then it will also receive the data from the slider. Be sure that you use the same naming convention as your send object from the main patch. Whenever you make changes to a patch, make sure you save it. Lastly, if you'd like to be able to play more than four notes at once, you will have to add additional note objects. Right now, my main patch is set up to handle four notes at a time. Let's say I want to be able to play five notes at a time. 
To begin, be sure that you are in edit mode. Then, click on this route object and add space 5. Click off of it and you will see that we have an additional outlet at the bottom. Now, I'm going to move these objects down to allow space for another note object. Then, I'm going to place another object, name it note, click off of it, connect the outlet of the route object to the inlet of this note object, and then connect the outlet of the note object to the inlet of this object. Now, my synthesizer is ready to be able to play five notes at a time. Now that we've finished programming, we are ready to unplug the monitor, the keyboard, and the mouse. And to make it even more portable, we can use a Bluetooth speaker and a battery pack. Now we're ready to go play some slow MIDI jams. <laughs> 